Welcome back to the channel, Upcyclers. We are doing a PSA card reveal today. Um, what we've got here is a whole bunch of uh, Fernando Tatis 2019 Tops Now cards. It's about half the order, and the other half is all kinds of other stuff. Uh, frankly, some much cooler, much more interesting stuff. So we're going to blow through the Tatis stuff. Um, quick background. Um, if you watched one of my other videos, you've noticed that I've mentioned that I'm working on, or actually by now I've completed, the PSA 10 set of all of the uh, Tops Now rookie cards for Tatis. I think there's 13 or 14 of them. And I had a bunch of raw stuff left over. So now that he's back, I sent these in. I've got maybe five bucks on average into these cards plus grading fees. So every time I get a 10, it's uh, it'll be pretty good profit for me. So anyway, let's go through these. Let's just blow through these. A little worried when I saw the first one, got a nine, but don't worry. Your boy's about to go on a run. There's a 10. Here, we'll get a 10 pile going here. All right. right there. Nine's over up here. Okay, here we go. There's another 10. And another 10. And another 10. And another 10. And yet another 10. More 10s. You get a 10. I get a 10. Everybody gets a 10. Now, was this a very lenient grader? No, not necessarily. Um, I've done very well on these grading in the past. Um, since they're never put in packs... They're manufactured and sent out directly from tops in little plastic cases. Um, yeah, they should be in a lot better shape. They're printed in limited quantities. Only the amount that people actually purchase there is actually a nine. All right, so not bad. Two nines and a bunch of tens. I think there's a few more mixed in here somewhere. I don't know why, but they sent them back out of order. I'll try to find the rest. There's a 10. Yeah, usually they put them, it's interesting, usually they pack them in exactly the same order. So I get, I get lazy. I just assumed and I barely even checked it. But no, these are all kind of whack order. Anyway. Whoop. Focus. Okay. Ten. Here's another nine. Now the nines, you're not even going to get your grading feedback out of those, most likely. But the tens, yeah, 50 bucks, 40 bucks at auction. If you want to wait, 60, 70, 80, sometimes for the right. There's a few of them that were lower production that are a little more desirable and harder to find. Those might go closer to 100. But, you know, when you start doing the math for how many of these there are, um, yeah, that's a pretty nice stack of profit for me there. Okay, so let's move. Nando off to the side over here, and let's get to the good stuff. In absolutely no particular order, here is a Diamond Producers 1999 Fleer Ultra. As you can see, this is a acetate card. Um, it is a absolutely beautiful card, and um, really a, a card of this age in a die cut like this, and it's really not bad. We're going to do pretty okay on that card, but that one's actually probably one I'm going to keep. I do have a uh, collection going of um, Griffey inserts from the 90s and early 2000s. Um, now, why did I not send this card to Tag? Uh, Tag doesn't do cards pre-2000, so I'm kind of stuck with PSA on those. Here's one of the few real bad grades of the order. Um, I knew this one had some issues. I was, certainly wasn't expecting a 10, but um, it is the silver. It's one you don't see come up for sale very often. Uh, it's a parallel they don't do anymore. But back then they used to do it. It was a, a paper parallel from a 2016 Bowman. I don't know what I'm going to do with that one yet. But there it is. All right. Now we've got a 2021 Bowman draft. This is the blue refractor of Jackson Merrill. Uh, that is, of course, number, numbered. 
out of 150. Um, I'm not a big Bowman guy. I don't get a lot of enjoyment out of opening packs where I haven't heard of basically anyone in the packs and they're years away from playing. Not my particular jam. A lot of people love to do it. There's a lot of potential and uh, a, a profit to be made in there for sure. Um, but, you know, just not my, uh, not my personal jam. Okay. Let's get into some interesting stuff. This is a good one. This is the yellow paper parallel. These came, these were a retail exclusive. They came in um, separate yellow card packs in the um, value packs or jumbo packs of 2016 Bowman. I bought a big lot of, I think a dozen of them a long time ago. And from time to time I opened them up and uh, I pulled my Tatis uh, that you can kind of see the corner of in the background uh, right over here in the back there. And uh, yeah, this one graded a 10 too. So this is a, this is a good one. This is probably at least a few hundred bucks. Okay. But that's definitely going to be a sell. Topps Gallery. I bought a complete set of the 2000 Topps Gallery because um, I got a great deal on it. I thought they were really cool cards. And frankly, I just really wanted the Griffey out of it. I sent a few in to get graded. And if you go back a couple of videos, um, you'll see those. And they all graded pretty well. I think they were almost all nines which, you know, creates some value. So I sent the rest of them in that I've been sitting on. And uh, as you're going to see, they did very well. This is the Pedro Martinez. In a nine. Here's the Vladimir Guerrero. And that got a gem 10. That's pretty cool. That is a very low pop. It's a single digit pop. I think it's like, Seven or eight. That is a good one. That one we're going to do pretty well on. Okay. And the last one is Chipper. Got a mint nine. So two nines and a ten out of cards from 2000. I'm very happy with that. That will be good. Um... One of my favorite, and, and I very much believe one of the more undervalued and unappreciated cards out there are the gold foils from Topps Flagship. Now, these are exclusive to the jumbo boxes. So this isn't the numbered gold where, you know, the, it's numbered by the um, year it is. So the ones that are numbered out, in this case, 2023, those have a much different gold background. And those you can pull out of anything. But these are exclusive to the jumbos. And um, if you do the math... These are actually a good bit rarer than the golds, but they tend to go for less money. So I've been targeting some of these. Fortunately, because they're paper and they're kind of like the rainbow foil ones, they're tough to grade, as you're about to see. There's a Miguel Vargas 9. There's a Nolan Gorman 9. And, and you know, I, I did not send any in that I saw had any sort of centering issues, so it certainly wasn't that. So it's some kind of surface issue or just tiny bit of edge or corner or something. There's a Gunnar Henderson. Hopefully he gets it going soon. He has not had the great greatest of starts to the season. Um, here's another cool Griffey card. This is a 92 Donruss Elite. I am a big fan of the early 90s Donruss Elite cards. They really are the you know a big part of why we have serial numbered cards today they were one of the first ones to do that really to be popular mainstream with that they're just beautiful cards i pulled this out of a pack when i was opening some blasters that is a stadium club chrome otani x-fractor from 2022 not a particularly difficult heart card to get, but um, Chrome card, especially Stadium Club Chrome, grades very well. This pulled a 10. You know, if I sold this raw, it was probably six, eight bucks maybe, but it'll probably be more like 40 or 50 like this, if not more. Plus, it's just a really cool looking card. And anytime, you know, 
you get a big name player like that in a parallel to grade in his hand, you're going to do pretty well. You're going to make a couple bucks is the bottom line. Um, here's a bit of an interesting one. Now, in a previous video, I had done a um, Justin Herbert blue scope. And I had cracked it out. And I thought it should have, I thought it had an excellent chance of getting a 10. And I was quite surprised and bummed to see that it got an 8. So I figured I had nothing to lose. I could either crack it and sell it raw or crack it and send it back in. So I decided to do the experiment and it upgraded to a 9. Now, I did no extra cleaning, messing with, or touching it anyway. I literally cracked it out, put it back in a penny sleeve, sent it back to them, which... That right there is a perfect example of why I just like tag better than better than PSA. I, I really believe if I would have sent this card in to tag 10 times, I would have got the same grade every time. But PSA, there's the subjectiveness of the grader. So it is what it is. Okay. Oh, one more Tatis that I missed. All right, a couple more to go. This one I got no clue on. I got absolutely wrecked on this one. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, good times. <laughs> sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. This is one of those cases. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I might crack it and put it in my PC. Who knows? Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. That diamond producer from earlier, that came back in eight. That was a HGA 8.5 that I cracked and sent in. So, yeah, not bad. Okay, here's a couple of cool ones. This guy is hot right now, so I need to get this thing up for sale like yesterday. His cards are going nuts. But here's the black of the uh, 88 throwback Josh Jung. Black border cards are always difficult to get a 10 in, so I'm not surprised by this. Would have been great to get a 10, but hey, what are you going to do? Here's a cool card. Definitely a, a PC one. Here is a Lords of the Diamond Refractor Tony Win. I have already a, a nicely graded copy of the uh, Griffey of this in my personal collection, so I added the Gwyn. Here is a Spencer Strider Rookie Auto that we got a 10 on, which is great. There's the auto. It is at least, unlike Update, um, this is the regular Topps Chrome and does have the uh, on-card autograph, which makes a big difference. So in a 10, this card's probably going to do pretty well. I don't think I've got a ton into it. I bought it raw. I mean, it certainly is possible to buy raw cards off eBay and send it in and get a 10. I do it all the time. You know, all you can do is, you know, look for the centering, read the description, zoom in on the pictures as best you can, and hope you don't have any uh, horrible hidden surface flaws. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Um, I love this Topps Black Gold set from 21 Update. I mean, they repeated it again in uh, 22, but this was a exclusive to the 70th anniversary. So these are numbered out of 70. I was really hoping for a 10 on this. I thought this was really clean. I guess, I mean, I don't think it's the centering, but the only thing I can see is it's ever so slightly thin on the right, I guess. But it's still a cool card and I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with that one yet. And last, but certainly not least, Brendan Donovan, uh, Stadium Club Chrome Auto, and that one pulled a 10, which is awesome. Well, there you go. Um, thanks a lot for going on this ride, and um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Hopefully, I kept it moving for you. If you enjoy this kind of content, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, like the video. Let me know any thoughts you have on any of these cards at the bottom. I'm most interested to know what people think about the Tops Now stuff. Um, you know, do you guys collect any of that? Um, you know, am I crazy that these things are undervalued? Um, 
yeah, so have a great day. Take care of yourself, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.